and as we've also been we've also been trying to um promote source of the funding available because what a lot of people don't really realize about tree planting is actually there's loads and loads of funding available so in devon i think there's probably over like maybe 20 24 um you know sources of funding you know all resources for tree planting so it's you know it's, it's good to push this out so we have actually put this on the lmp so under the trees for devon page i'll put a link at the end i think yeah we've got, we've got a link from the agency tree fund page as well if not but um yeah this is a really handy bit of kit especially you know if you're a member of a parish council and you know looking to actually you know grab some funding to really start accelerating tree planting initiatives in your area um and again it's worth mentioning the right place right tree guidance if you are thinking about doing this it's definitely worth my um, signposting you to that um next slide please kate cool so yeah so now on to the um you know the common trees you can find in devon um for this we chose six trees so uh, beech sycamore oak hazel silver birch and field maple so these are i'd say these are all fairly common in devon um and they're i'd say these are probably some of the easier ones to identify as well so if you don't mind going to the next slide please kate cool so beech um probably one of my favorites um so with beech uh the leaves are sort of a lime green so they're very bright very bright green especially when they're younger um as they get older the uh the leaves do go a bit darker but one of the giveaways of beech is the leaves are really glossy so they're almost kind of like a plastic really like sort of almost like you'd find in a fake plant in a shop or something like that um it's worth not noting also that the leaves sort of you know they're round when they come to a point um so beech has both female and male flowers so if you look at the picture there you can see that um it has these tassel tassel like sort of male catkins so a catkin is basically a flower cluster so that's what these are um, and they sort of they cut they're sort of on long stalks at the end of twigs basically so you, you see these in april and may so sort of this time of year uh next slide please go so um this is just a closer look at the actual shape of the leaf so you can sort of see it's like this sort of oval shape and it comes to a point so also note it's not tubed so the the actual edges of the leaf they're sort of you know this is round it's not sort of serrated like you might see on a bread knife like on other leaves which we'll come to that as an example later but yeah so like i said glossy leaves usually bright and usually a lime green color um next slide please kate so did you know so it's also i probably should worth mentioning actually that the um a big giveaway of these of these beech trees is their bark is sort of like an elephant gray color i sort of forgot to mention that earlier but um yeah did you know so beech is really susceptible to bracket fungi so it's the sort of it's that sort of mushroom that looks you know like big dinner plates growing on the side of trees basically so you might actually recognize this so you often do see this in woodlands you'll see these really large um fungi growing on these beech trees so um, I mean, depending on the type of the beech tree, this sorry, depending on the type of the bracket fungus, this could be harmful. But sometimes it has more of a mutualistic relationship. So sometimes this could this could benefit the tree, basically. Um, next slide, please, Kate. So sycamore. So um, sycamore have a really distinctive leaf. So they're sort of five pointed leaves. Um, in the younger trees as well, you'll see the leaf stalk might actually be more of a red color. So yeah, if you look at the leaf, it's got a five pointed leaf. Um, but you've also if you look at the picture below you've got the samsara so after pollination by insects the flowers basically develop into samsara so when i was when i was younger we used to call them helicopters so they're what you see they sort of fall from the tree and sort of slowly um fall and spin as they fall um but they're, they're winged fruits basically that's what these are um so sycamore is it's technically non-native so um basically that means it was you know introduced from somewhere else so i think they it's it's you know we're, the theory is that the romans basically brought these over in the 1500s and uh, next slide please kate so um like i said the leaf comes to five points so i guess it's like a some might say it's a palmate shape but we'll say it's a hand shape um also notice as well that you know on these leaves they're rigid so the the actual that they've got these rigid kind of like i said the sort of bread knife serrated edges so they come to a point but if you look you'll see these sort of rigid edges on there so also, it was worth noting the long stalk as well. So some some trees have leaves with very short stalks, but these have very long stalks. Uh, next slide, please, Kate. So again, just a little fact here: the um, the sycamore can grow. So the sycamore is quite a big tree sometimes. So the sycamores can grow up to thirty five meters and live for over four hundred years. One of the reasons I mention this is because the sycamore does actually have quite a similar leaf to the. Well, some people might feel that think the sycamore. 
has a very similar leaf to the field maple, but the field maples are generally quite a lot smaller. So it's the size could be a big giveaway here. Uh, next slide, please, Kate. So oak. So oaks, you know, quite, I suppose it's one of the easier ones. Um, the leaves are, if you see, they've got these sort of deep lobes. So they're sort of 10 centimeter long, these leaves, and they tend to have probably four to five uh, deep lobes. And they've also got smooth edges. So I'm sure we all recognize the, um, the acorns. So the acorns tend to be sort of two, two and a half centimeters long. And as they, so they, they start off green, but as they ripen, they do eventually turn brown and they will just sort of fall to the floor. So when these acorns fall, they usually sprout the following spring. Um, but yeah, I'm sure this is probably what we're all familiar with, but it's, it's worth noting. Um, and again, just some more trivia that in England, um, oak is supposed to be the national symbol of strength. So next slide, please, Kate. Um, yeah, so again, just looking at the shape of it here. So you'll notice on the oaks, they have these really deep lobes. So these bumps, um, they've also got smooth edges as well. So always look at that with the leaf. Um, but yeah, so they've got lots of deep lobes. And another thing worth noting is that if you do see oak leaves, is that they tend to grow in bunches. So you'll find them, you know, sort of clusters of clusters of oak leaves, basically. Uh, next slide, please, Kate. Um, so yeah, so again, sort of more, a little bit more trivia, I suppose. Um, so oaks, you know, they're some of the hardest and most durable timbers in the world. So it, you know, they, you have to use really mature oak as well. So it can take up to about 150 years before an oak is usually ready to be used in construction. Um, it's sort of been a prized hardwood for thousands of years now. So it's been used in the timber industry for you know ages and ages. Um, but we still do we do still use it in things like flooring, wine barrels, and firewood. Uh, the picture that you can actually see behind here is apparently the, according to the Plymouth Herald, apparently this is the oldest oak in Devon. So this is the Meavy Oak, which I've not, I've not seen this myself. So this is the Meavy Oak near Yelverton, which is apparently is a thousand years old. So if you actually look closely at the picture, you can see it's almost hollowed out on the inside. So it's amazing it's still standing really. Um, next slide, please, Kate. So Hazel. Um, so yeah, with hazel, uh, the leaves can be quite round, um, almost, I'd say, almost sort of pear-shaped, actually. Um, so they're hairy and they're pointed at the tip. They're, we'll come to the leaf in a second, but they turn off quite a pointed tip. Um, so the, the female flowers turn into fruit, so hence hazel. The, the fruits here are the hazelnuts, basically. Um, so hazel was, was grown um, until 1900s for uh, large-scale nut production, but uh, nowadays I think most hazel is actually imported. Uh, if you just go to the next slide, please, Kate. Um, yeah, so like I was saying, so the hazel leaves can be quite round or oval, and they're quite hairy, and um, they tend to have this sort of pointed tip. So a big giveaway of these is they're quite soft. So if you were to sort of touch one, they do, you know, un unlike, you know, say a beech leaf, for example, which feels quite sort of almost plasticky and glossy, these these hazel leaves are very, they're very, very soft to the touch. Um, in autumn as well, they go yellow. So that's a bit of a giveaway. So not all trees leaves go yellow in autumn, but hazel leaves do. Next slide, please, Kate. Yeah, so um, what a, a big giveaway really with hazel is that you tend to see it looking like this. So if you look at the picture, you've got a crown with lots of long poles. So the reason that it occurs like this is because hazel is traditionally coppiced. So these poles traditionally have had lots of different uses but this because of the flexibility so they're quite hard and sturdy but they're also very flexible so i mean if you think about more you know traditional things that might have been used for people using for basket weaving um in fencing for example um, i mean people who still do hedge length today would still find hazel quite useful it's a really um a really easy way to kind of fill out a hedge really because you can sort of fit it in all the gaps and you can stretch on the along the whole length of the fence so it's got lots of different uses um next slide please kate so silver birch, the leaves with silver birch are slightly smaller than some of the other ones we've looked at. So these are kind of like, so these are light green, sort of small triangular shaped leaves. Um, notice the toothed edge as well. So these these are also leaves that fade to yellow in autumn. Um, a really a really big giveaway of the silver birch is the striking white gray um, bark, bark, sorry. So this, this bark sort of sheds like tissue paper. So you might've seen this before. But as the tree uh, develops, basically, it sort of causes it to develop these sort of dark diamond-shaped marks. So if you just go to the next slide, please, Kate. 
okay, we'll come back to the pitch with the bark in a second. So yeah, with the leaves, um, like I said, they're sort of triangular. Um, they've got this serrated toothed edge and the leaves end in a point. And like I said, they're quite small as well. So if you just look at the edge here, you can see it's quite serrated here. So that's a bit of a giveaway, especially in this shape of leaf. Um, next slide, please, go. Yeah, so like I was saying about the bark earlier, you can sort of see these like black, um, almost kind of triangle or sort of diamond shapes on them. So this is from the sort of the bark peeling off basically as it grows older because it gets very papery. So that is, you know, that's a really easy way to spot them. Um, yeah, here we go, some more trivia. Um, so yeah, the silver birch is apparently the national tree of Finland. So we have oak, they have silver birch. Next slide, please, Kate. So field maple. Um, so like I was saying earlier, the field maple, you might think it looks quite similar to sycamore, but I'll, we'll go through a comparison in a bit. Um, so with field maple, the leaves are small, dark, green, and shiny with rounded teeth. So um, if you look at the picture below, you can see these winged fruits again. So these are quite similar. Again, the sycamore have, have these as well, but they're, they're slightly different. So we'll, like I said, we'll come to this in a second. If we just go to the leaf, please, Kate. So, yeah, so again, we've got a leaf with this sort of palmate or hand shape. Um, it's got toothed points, but smooth edges. So if you look at the edges, it's smooth rather than serrated like the sycamore. So we can look at that in a little bit more detail if we go to the next slide. Um, yeah, so we've got sycamore on the left here and field maple on the right. So notice the leaves of the sycamore have a serrated edge, a bit like a bread knife, and the field maple, they're round sort of these two points. Um, and again, if we look at the if we look at these winged fruits again, these samsaras or helicopters, um, the main difference here is that with the sycamore, you can see that they're drooping. So with the field maple, they sort of it's almost like having some two arms out by their sides, really. They're sort of pointing out. But you know, with the sycamore, there's more more of a V shape, so they're sort of drooping. Um, next slide, please, Kate. So yeah, in parts of Europe, apparently it was for the maple branches hung around a doorway was supposed to stop bats entering. So if we go to the next slide, please, Kate, I think we've pasted some, yeah. So I spoke about some resources earlier. So if you are looking to, you know, actually learn these leaves, I'd say this Woodland Trust Spotter Guide is really helpful. So the pictures we've just looked at with the single slides with just the leaf in the middle, this is where we've taken these from, this Spotter Guide. So this is really helpful to look at. Um, there's also mobile apps as well. So um, here's so one example is the PlantNet plant identification app. So I've not really used this myself, um, but apparently you, with this one, you can just take a picture and it will give a go at identifying. The one I think we would recommend though would be the Tree ID. So this, um, you know, Tree ID, British Trees Wooden Trust mobile app is actually really good because with this one, it's more like a, um, if you think of any, I don't know, like an RSBB identification book, where it actually takes you through the process of looking what you go to one feature and then the next feature. And it's a really good way to learn to ID things. Um, and then, like I mentioned at the start with the emergency tree fund here, um, we've got a link here. So if you do, you know, if, if you know someone who has, you know, you might someone know someone who actually has public land or you are a member of a parish or town council yourself, then definitely have a look at this if this is something you're interested in. Um, I think that's that's all. So yeah, thanks guys. Great, thank you very much, Elliot. That's really useful. Um, I didn't know that the sycamore and the field maple, the helicopters, that's what we call them yeah. as kids as well. I didn't realize that was the fruits. Um, yeah, so that's really interesting. Thank you. Yeah, they look very similar. They do, don't they? Yeah. Um, so just to finish off the last thing we wanted to say, um, in Naturally Healthy May, we are running a photography competition. Um, anybody can take part uh, and photos from your phone or um, from a camera are fine. So we're, we're not judging on um, how the kind of quality of the picture but we're judging on what you've taken a picture of. So we want people to send in pictures of them being naturally healthy, be it uh, the, the place that they're in, if they don't want to be in the picture or um, them doing an activity. So if you would like to find out about that, um, we'll also uh, share the link with you and it's on the Active Devon website. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing and then just see if we've had any questions. 
Oh, someone pointed out that I forgot to press record. Thank you. Um, <laughs> one of those admin issues. Um, are the tree guards made of plastic still? If so, how do we recycle when no longer required? Have you had a, anything come up with the tree guards that you use, Elliot? Um, yeah, so we, yeah, this is a bit of a kind of ongoing thing, really. So um, we have been using biodegradable ones where we can. There probably are still a few schemes where we haven't been able to use them. But um, I think there is some, there is actually um, some, there was a recommendation, I think it was from the Woodland Trust that was saying, I think you should take it down to sure, like, if you, if you contact your council, you should be able to find out the sort of nearest sort of disposal place for plastic. So I can have a look and see if there's a link to that, but I wouldn't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, we are generally moving to biodegradable. So we tend to use biodegradable spiral guards. Are there any other questions? Uh, I think. Oh, what is sycamore when felled used for? And is it seen as an invasive tree? So I'm I'm correct. It's not an invasive. It's so it's so yeah. So sycamore isn't an invasive tree. It's so some I guess sometimes um people might perceive that invasive and non-native are the same thing. So you can have I mean for example think of something like a rhododendron that would be a non-native invasive but you know something that perhaps has been here for a while and is well established and isn't necessarily invasive as such um, it's not necessarily a pest so um, I guess sycamore is kind of everywhere in Devon so I don't think we would see it as necessarily invasive um, I'm sure there's someone else who might <laughs> have a different opinion um, but yeah I guess it's again sycamore is I guess it gets, it's one of those things that has lots of uses as well. So I, I'm not too sure what a specific use for sycamore might be, but again, it does have lots of uses. Not, not coming from a tree manager background, um, we have found that sycamore is very similar bark to ash with its pH. Um, so with kind of climate change and ash disease in the right place, sycamore can be planted to replace ash and it can support some incredibly rare lichens we have in Devon. So we've got these really beautiful ones called tree lungwort, which grow on ash and they also grow on sycamore, but it, it is a difficult one and, and there, it can be a bit controversial. So we wouldn't advise, or people generally don't advise, oh, you can replace ash with sycamore. It's very specific to the site um, and what works there as well. Uh, what else did we have? Great to have planted 9,000 trees. How many needed to be planted for climate protection? Um, so we do have at Devon County Council a team called the Climate Emergency, is it Climate Emergency Group? Yeah, DCA. Um, they are, I don't know the, the kind of stats off the top of the head, but they would probably have that kind of information. Um, and it's not just trees. So in Devon, we have um, some amazing seagrass, um, particularly in the south, that locks up carbon. Um, we, and there's a project around Plymouth called the Remedies Project, which is helping to plant it. Um, in North Devon, they're looking at doing seagrass planting as well. And then on Dartmoor, um, peat locks up a lot more carbon than trees. And there's some projects up there called the Upstream Thinking that um, block up some of the water and are helping to kind of improve the peat. So we've got lots of different kind of activities going on. Um, and just since joining the County Council three months ago, I've been really impressed by all the different projects that are going, around, are going along around the, council, uh, the county to improve climate change. But yeah, there's lots to do, but we are working on it uh, as are all the partners. Um, and other people have put, we reuse plastic cards too, but often they are damaged. Yeah, it's it's a tricky one. Okay, well, if there are any other questions, please do get in touch. If not, um, please do check out our Devon Local Nature Partnership website. And hopefully we'll see some of you tomorrow on the flower one, which I'll, I'll be leading as well and doing. Um, but if not, thank you very much. And I'm now going to end the session. Thank you, everybody.